Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Eden Zero, Chapter 111. Uh, when we last left our heroes, uh, after failing to get through the fire tunnel, which left to go and get Laguna, uh, the gang had a discussion with Nadia about uh, the robot corpses all found outside. She revealed that when the treasure was stolen 200 years ago, all the robots powered down, including her initially, uh, before she was saved by an engineer named Andrew 200 years ago, who was almost certainly the corpse uh, that they saw in the pod at the start of the arc. Uh, but Nadia still believes that Andrew will return. Uh, then Lagoon and Witch arrive. Uh, the two of them and Shiki go down into the fire tunnel one more time. Laguna turns Shiki into water, and with a little bit of Witch's magic, helps Shiki re uh, retain his form while as water which allows Shiki to use his ether gear to get through the cave, reach the other side of the temple, where he finds a vision of Mother. Uh, so yeah, all that being said, let's jump right on into chapter 111, The Sky of Days Long Past. On uh, our picture here is Rebecca as like a Playboy bunny, and with a banana, because it wasn't already suggestive enough. Anyway... Uh, so let's open, we open with, um, someone holding a Lacrima, uh, and Happy notices it. That's Master's Aquatic Adaptation Lacrima. Uh, and so Happy and Pina both recognize it. I, that, my guess is that that's Wise's hand. Uh, no, it's Rebecca's, actually. No, be, or no, it's someone else's, because all three of them are looking at it. Uh, all three being, not, uh, Homer, uh, Rebecca, and Wise. Uh, Homer comments, it shines in the colors of the rainbow. It's beautiful. So it's this thing, but changed? Oh, Shiki's back already. Okay, that's shocking. I thought there was going to be a bit more to that after last chapter. Um, but Shiki says, yeah, just sucked up Mother's Ether all of a sudden. Uh, Nadia corrects him. To be precise, the Mother Ether found a vessel and went inside of its own volition. Uh, the treasure we kept here was a part of Mother. And which comments that sounds like quite a prize. This piece of mother radiated mother ether. The ether's residue remained, even after the treasure was lost. Okay, so that's how it worked. Because uh, there was some question of uh, the beacon was inside the treasure, and then the treasure was stolen. And I wasn't quite sure how the beacon would still remain, as Nadia said. Uh, but it's because there was still... The beacon is just mother's ether. Um, so yeah, the ether's residue remained, even after the treasure was lost. Um, Rebecca asks, and this ether will tell us where we can find Mother? Let us just say that it is possible. It is said that many pieces of Mother lie strewn across the cosmos. We call them relics. What does that mean, pieces of Mother? Because Mother is an organism. Uh, and the visions that we've seen of her, she seems to be humanoid. Uh, and we see that she's, you know, not, not notably missing any body parts. Um... Like, even if she were, act, like, she has two arms now, when she was originally, like, a four- or six-armed person, there should still be, like, stumps where her arms were, but there's not, so I don't exactly know what's going on there. Uh, anyway, these relics may be worshipped, as one was here. They may be concealed in some planet's hidden corner, or they may be wandering through space. They may be anywhere. And we see her, rel uh, the relics that Nadia is talking about, and they're all just, like, items. We see, like, a chalice, a cane, a knife, a clock, a mirror, a chest, a, like, pitcher, it looks like, uh, a gemstone of some kind. Um, so I guess that's the answer to, uh, uh, the relics, the, though I still don't get why they're called pieces of Mother, um, if they're just, like, things that she owned. Uh, though if Mother is the progenitor of, isn't she supposed to be, like, the, the progenitor of all life? So then how, how does that work? Mother is just a whole bunch of mysteries uh, that we will eventually get into, I hope. Anyway, the Mother Ether works as a compass to find these relics. If you find enough relics and absorb their Mother Ether, then eventually, and Shiki grins, it will take us to Mother. Uh, but Nadia t uh, tempers him. It might, is all I can say. On uh, which listens to that, uh, before Rebecca responds, it sounds like trying to catch a cloud. And then Happy comforts her, but we didn't have any clues before. Yes, conclusion, we've made good progress. Uh, but Wise chimes in, sounds like a big pain in the neck. 
excuse me, let's just absorb all the Mother Ether in this temple. Uh, Maguna stops him. You're so stupid, it brings tears to my eyes. What? Many people have been here, and no one has done that. It means it's probably not possible. Uh, and Nadia confirms that. That is correct. It makes no difference difference how much of the temple's Mother Ether you absorb. It will not change its properties. It is by absorbing Mother Ether from other places that you will change its properties and strengthen it. Of course, this is all a theory I heard from Andrew. I am an old model. Uh, and Shiki thanks her. Got it. Thanks for your help. If we follow this ether, then one day, we'll find Mother. Um, so I guess, I, I've been making a lot of Eden Zero One Piece comparisons over the years, uh, just because their structures are very similar. Um, and I guess this is the closest thing Eden Zero has to a log pose. Um, for that little piece of, of One Piece history that has not been relevant in several years. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it guides them to, in One Piece, the next island, and here, the next piece of Mother, which is very different. Because uh, it does mean that they can go to different places that the ether is not pointing towards. Um, uh, which, I mean, I guess they could do that with the with the, the log pose too. But with the, with the Grand Line, it's very dangerous to step outside of where they're supposed to be. Uh, and we have not really gotten that sense from the Aoi Cosmos. Uh, which will allow for more getting sidetracked by, uh, by Nero Poseidon. Or Poseidon Nero, whatever his name was. We haven't actually seen him yet, but he'll presumably be an important figure in this saga. Anyway, let's move forward. That settles it. Let's go. Indeed. A happy cause out. Thanks, Nadia and Pino, very, very kindly. I hope you can see Mr. Andrew again. Thank you. Uh, but Rebecca thinks back that Andrew is probably... And then she sees Nadia grinning so happily. Uh, and then... I'm trying to see if that's which, or I feel like that's which instead of, my first thought was that was Rebecca. Um, but I don't think, we see like, uh, uh, maybe a choker on her neck, which might be Rebecca's lacrima. Uh, but I don't, I think the hair looks slightly different, uh, if that were, that were Rebecca talking. Lady Nadia. Yes? It pains me deeply to say this. Oh yeah, it is which. Okay. But Lord Andrew is no longer with us. Wit and Rebecca's witch, uh, and Nadia still smiles, which is a little confused now. Lord Andrew left your planet 200 years ago. It is not possible for a human to live that long. What? But he promised me that he would come back. And Rebecca, you know, snaps at witch. Stop it, witch! Lady Rebecca, do you think hiding the truth is the only way to show kindness? But he kept his promise. He did come back, but he is not alive. Did Witch go to check the, the spacecraft before she arrived here? Because I don't remember them reporting any of that to, to Witch. Uh, and Rebecca did not tell anyone about the uh, Nadia inscription in the spacecraft. Hmm. Um, and uh, Nadia looks at her confused. A small craft crash landed here not long ago. The body on board was your Lord Andrew. Uh, and Shiki, what? That skeleton dude? Um, and Homer asks, but how can a corpse pilot a... And then she's shocked for a moment uh, as Witch pulls out this, like, SD card looking thing. The answers are in this memory chip. Uh, and Nadia starts to sweat, which raises some questions of can, can robots sweat? I feel like you might have seen that before, but I'm not sure. I found it on his ship. P please, you must let me see it. Uh, and then Witch hands it to Pino, who opens a screen. Uh, and we see Andrew when he was alive. Day 6, month 7, X290. Hey, Nadia, how are you doing? Andrew. I got the relic back. We're lucky the thief was just a small-time crook. And I have a friend in the government. This should put everybody on Red Cave back to normal. And you won't need that cable anymore. Oh, it's going to be... If he has the relic on him, then we can give Nadia some more peace of mind. Or, or have her not just be sitting in the temple for all time. I'm pretty close to Red Cave now. I missed it, Sky. We always watch together. Uh, and which uh, Nadia smiles. 
It took a whole year. I'm sorry. I can't wait to see you again. I love you. Mm? Andrew. Uh, just then there's some beeping on, in the video. Uh-oh. That's not good. Gah! And he seems to be hit by something. Andrew! And then the, the video cuts to static. Uh, and then she calls his name again. Andrew! Uh, and then Witch fills her in. It was a meteoroid. From our, ca from our calculations, I'd say it rendered him unconscious and unable to steer. The collision knocked his, knocked his ship off course. And after 200 years, he crash-landed on the planet. Oh, he was just orbiting Red Cave. Which is how the ship had, had a long-dead corpse in it. Uh, though, how long did it render him unconscious for? And long enough that he, like, starved to death? I don't know. That's, like... If if she said the, the the meteoroid killed him, that would be one thing. But I don't know. Uh, and Nadia starts to, just starts to cry as is happy. No, where is he, Nadia? And she runs, Andrew, and then tears the cable. Um, the cable. Hey, she can't survive without this cable. Let's go after her. Uh, and Nishiki and Wise run after her, and they find Nadia at the crashed ship, and she sees Andrew's corpse. Oh, Andrew, no, it's not true. It can't be. You can't really be dead. Uh, and which approaches her. The life of a human is short compared to ours. Uh, and just then Nadia sees the inscription, Nadia, love of my life. I see now. Humans cannot live 200 years. Uh, and Shiki and Laguna are both there. Shiki's crying too, because of course he is. Then is it wrong for a machine to love a human? No. We can all love whomever we choose. Uh, and Wise arrives. Interestingly, um, so, so I saw here Laguna and Shiki with their bubbles, and I figured I just, like, forgotten that bubbles, that the, the water lacrima spawned bubbles around their heads, uh, but they never did that at all. Because we see Wise and Homer out here with their lacrima and with no bubbles. So why is Shiki not wearing his lacrima? Um, is it because of the Mother Eater it now no longer works as as the water protection uh, lacrima, or or what? I don't I don't know what it, what it, what else it would be. Uh, but anyway, uh, Wise comes in. We need that cable hooked back up quick. Uh, but uh, Nadia asks. What good would it do to live in a world without Andrew? You misunderstand, Lady Nadia. The souls of those we've lost exist within our hearts. Uh, but Nadia, Nadia uh, counters, androids don't have hearts. The fact that you feel love for someone is proof that you do. Ah, uh, good old witch. This is some good, good, good Mashima, Mashima feels hours right here. Um... And Nadia just silently cries. Uh, and Y snaps. Okay, we got to repair that cable. Let me just... And then Rebecca comes in. I think she's okay without it. What? Andrew said it on the memory chip, remember? He got the relic back. She won't need the cable anymore. Uh, and Homer asks, you mean, tis on his ship? The relic. Uh, and we see a light shine from the ship. Uh, as something floats... And we see it's like a candelabra uh, shining. Presumably that's, that's Mother's relic. The relic! This is a piece of Mother? Uh, and Pino responds, it looks like a candelabra. Uh, but then it shines. Shines even brighter. And then it looks to shatter. Maybe? Or maybe... Because maybe, there's a flash and it looks like it's turned to dust right there. Or maybe I'm just misreading that. Uh, but then the beam of light envelops the city. Uh, and all of the robots, like, the, their eyes start to shine, and they all start to stand up. And then they all start cheering. Look, the town's robots! Yeah! Uh, and Nadia turns back. Uh, we see her tears, like, flowing behind her. And Laguna notices them, too. Real tears. Um, I wonder what that's about. Um, because we know that, that, that Laguna would always use, like, pain to cause tears. Maybe there's a difference between pain-caused tears and sadness-caused tears. Uh, or pain or, or um, fear. Because we saw that Shiki's fear of, of bugs um, led to him being, being waterized, I guess, uh, last chapter. But anyway, 
We then uh, come to above the water. Oh, it, it, I thought they had, they had left, but the water is sinking actually, because uh, we see the top of the top of Andrew's ship, uh, and Wise is now up. Uh, it comes up to like Wise's waist. What the? The water's all. The water level is receding. Uh, Happy is swimming after the fish. <laughs> Will the fish be okay? Uh, but Nadia states the planet is returning to its rightful state. Um, and then Shiki looks up. Whoa, the night is ending. It's so bright. Was it always night when they arrived? I thought they kind of got there. Maybe it was just like they got there around around sunset in that the first chapter of this arc. Um, but then Witch looks up. The sky is red. The red colors. Everything. Even the ocean. Uh, and Nadia responds. The, fly the flames that light this candelabra illuminate our world. So we see the candelabra is still intact. Did not crumble to dust. Uh, I m must have misread that panel. The world we once saw together. Andrew, you helped me to see it again. And we have this whole like full page image uh, of Nadia leaning on Andrew's uh, spaceship as as the water recedes, as she sees the sun um, for the first time in 200 years. And everyone just like watches. Uh, gazing up at the sun, we see Wise, uh, Witch and Laguna, Wise and Homer, uh, Happy and Pino. And Rebecca just kind of like rubs her eyes. Ah, love. And then Shiki looks back at her. Hmm? I, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, and Shiki just looks a little confused. Especially because there was very little way to interpret it as some kind of... She's in love with Shiki. Um, that just feels kind of thrown in for the Shiki-Rebecca shippers. But anyway, we then go back to the Eden Zero. Uh, and everyone kind of cheers, uh, waves goodbye to them. Including the octopus monster who I thought would be much less happy about not living in the water anymore. But I guess not. I n now I just have, have no idea what his whole deal is. <laughs> um, and as they fly away, Shiki looks down. That octopus. It was the guardian of the temple? Uh, and Rebecca looks on silently, and Homer asks, What ails you, Rebecca? I was just thinking. I wish a chronophage could come eat this planet's time. 200 years of it. Uh, and that is the end of the chapter. Um, be very careful what you wish for. Chronophages rarely give you the time you want, Rebecca. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this was a lovely chapter. Um, it just... It's one of those, like, there's none of... Eden Zero occasionally it dips into this kind of very mean-spirited, uh, like, BDSM-adjacent shit... Uh, and there's none of that, which is good. Um, um, it was just really, like, heartfelt. It was both, at the, at the for the first quarter of the chapter, a little bit of, of setting up the rest of the plot. Uh, of finding the other relics so they get enough, enough ether to um, go to Mother. Uh, it's one of those things that's like, it's very... Uh, the, the way it's set up is very... Um, conducive to being as long as Mashima wants it to be, uh, because there's no set amount of Mother Ether they need to find Mother. It's just, have enough Mother Ether, and if you just keep collecting relics over and over again, it will eventually lead to Mother. Um, so it both sets up the plot structure going forward, while not, um, not setting any kind of timetable so the story can go on for as long as Mashima wants. Uh, but then after that, we get into the real heart of this chapter, which is getting a resolution to the Nadia and Andrew story, um, which is just real good. It's a real good tearjerker. Uh, the kind that Eden Zero doesn't really, really deal with as much as, as much as, like, Fairy Tale used to. Uh, we had a few tearjerkers here and, here and there, things like Valkyrie's story, um, but for the most part, it's kind of a dark and grittier story in the kind of tearjerkers that Mashima used to used to really make his bread and butter. Um, and honestly, it's just we have some great moments of um, asserting the the I guess humanity of androids is kind of a weird turn of phrase, but is what we got. Um, and then yeah, it all kind of ends well. Uh, with the reveal that, that Andrew had the relic, 
uh, as he was on his way back to Red Cave after gaining the relic, uh, which then makes everything right in Red Cave again. Um, and with that, the gang leaves. The octopus is now happy to see them. Uh, and we have this image of it would be nice if a chronophage would, you know, eat 200 years of the planet's time. Uh, which given how, again, like I said earlier, how bad chronophages tend to be, is kind of sketch. <laughs> like, like, Rebecca, let's, let's not, let's not go there. Let's just not go there. Um... But yeah, that's kind of it. This was a fairly long video, I will say. But there's just a lot, lot to dig into, um, with this, with this wrapping up of the Red Cave arc. So now we're headed supposedly towards the next bit of Mother Ether. I would not be shocked if we get more than a little sidetracked, uh, by Nero Poseidon or Poseidon Nero, whatever his name was, uh, the next member of the Rossian Seis Galactica. Uh, just because that seems to be the big theme of the Aoi Cosmos, given, given, uh, what Hermit said earlier about him being in charge of really everything in the Cosmos. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to wait till next time to see where all of that plays out. So, that's all I have to say for this video. Hope you all enjoyed the video and the chapter itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!